Hey, are you thinking about retiring abroad, but not quite sure what you want to do? Perhaps you'd like to write a book. I know just the person that can help you because she retired to Panama and now runs this really cool retreat. So stick with me. I'm going to introduce you to my friend, Linda, who will tell you all about how her life transpired in a different country. So join us back here. Hi everybody, this is Cynthia with Global Traveler Realtor. I'm coming today with my good friend, Linda Allison, who's in Panama by way of Canada. Uh, she has some amazing things that she's doing in Panama in terms of um, helping others get their stories out and doing some retreats and some other things. So I'm not gonna spoil all of that with everybody. I'm gonna let you tell us your story. So Linda, thank you very much for being with us. And let's just begin with, you know, how did you get to Panama? Why Panama? You were in Canada. Um, you know, how, what was the magnet that drew you there? Well, long before I got married even to my husband, he made it very clear that when he retired, he would like to retire somewhere hot. He is not a fan of Canadian winters. And so in his mind, he thought he'd like to retire in Samoa. But uh, after us uh, doing a little bit of research, we realized very quickly it was way too far out of our reach. Uh, and our adult children, we had two who had moved to Panama. And so we came to Panama about seven or eight times prior to our actual move here. And it gave us an opportunity to uh, explore the different things uh, Panama has to offer. I mean, where we're located right now, we're a less than 15 minute walk to the beach, but we're also only a 45 minute drive to the mountains where you can hike. And so, uh, you know, Panama's got a broad range of uh, things that uh, make it interesting to explore. And so that's where we started, exploring Bocas del Toro, the islands off the northern coast, which we absolutely uh, enjoyed, it was a lot of fun, uh, but we weren't sure that we wanted to have to take a boat to the grocery store. So, <laughs> you know, it was fun when you're on holidays, but we, we thought it might wear a little bit thin for us. Uh, also, uh, on the northern shore, there was more rain. Um, we checked out the mountain town of Boquete, very, very pretty, uh, lots of hiking, and and uh, places to tour, but a little bit cool for my husband. He was going for the hot thing. We checked out the Azuero Peninsula, uh, where there are surfing beaches and uh, lots of uh, natural spaces to enjoy. It was a little bit remote for us, and uh, we weren't just moving here to relax. We were moving here to start a business. So we were looking for specific things that met the criteria so that uh, we could do what we were passionate about. Very, very good. We'll come back to that passion in just a moment. Did you check out any other countries when you were looking other than Samoa? <laughs> <laughs> well, not as thoroughly. Certainly, you know, we, um, we did some traveling over the last few years. Uh, I think you know, the, we have a strong family connection, so definitely the fact that our older two children were here. I thought, you know, if I ever had a chance to see my grandkids, it would be nice to be in the same country. We don't have any grandkids, but and they're not, one of them's not here anymore anyway. So, you know, I, I love that they are global travelers as well, um, but they have a strong connection here to Panama. So we, we thought it was the best place where we could keep those family ties. Very good, very good. So before again we get into what your passion is, um, you've got to stick with us, everybody, so you can you can find out, and then we'll give you some good some good uh, secrets at the end. Um, you're going to tell me a little bit about what it was that you did in your prior life, um, and what your husband did, as well as um, you know when you decided to move to Panama what was that experience like did you put your house on the market what did your friends say 
uh, you know, what was your thought process? Obviously, moving towards family is always a big magnet, right? A big pull to be where your your family is, and I feel that as well. My husband and I, with our seven children, always that we do have grandkids, but we didn't when we first moved to Panama. So, um, so tell me a little bit about you. Well, I was formerly a teacher. I taught high school, mostly English and history and civics and entrepreneurship. Uh, I had uh, previous businesses as well, and I also liked to write, so I had written for some magazines, newspapers, some adult short stories that had been published. And I was a part of a, a fairly large writers group in the Durham region in Ontario called the Writers, uh, writers Community of Durham, Durham Region. And so twice a month, despite how busy I got, I made sure to keep that space for my writing. I would write with a group of writers one morning a month and then I would attend their writers breakfast. So when, when we looked at moving here, I took what was uh, what I enjoyed most about teaching. I loved helping people to write their stories and I found that for many students who experience hindrances in their education, in writing and being able to share their stories, it helped them be able to move forward. So I enjoyed teaching creative writing. I did not enjoy marking essays on Sunday afternoons. <laughs> and so I took my favorite aspects of what I was doing in the past and I rolled them over into a business called The Word Tour, which uh, I can operate both here in Panama and internationally. So um, I left behind what I didn't like and, and brought with me what I enjoyed. Uh, my husband was formerly a cost schedule analyst in the nuclear engineering business, so he was a big project guy. And uh, he tried to convince everyone when he retired he was going to do absolutely nothing. And <laughs> we actually did take some time to become Tranquilo. We call our writing retreat here Tranquilo Retreat. We had to learn to kind of gear down. Uh, move a little uh, slower and enjoy this slower pace uh, but um, you know he's very interested in politics and the market and so he's often researching uh, those things and he's joining me in writing as well he's writing his own book so uh, he gets to be a part of uh, you know the people who come here to enjoy writing he can jump in with that that's really cool I keep thinking of the um... You know that song, I got the music in me. It's like, I got the book in me, I got the book in me. <laughs> and people like you help us bring it out, right? Because uh, you kind of guide us down a path. Uh, and I met you, I actually came to one of your um, little writing workshops that you had. How did you get started with your new business when you moved to Panama? Because you're, you're fresh out of the gate, just kind of moving there, not knowing a lot of people. How did you kind of, you know, get going? Well, uh, before I got here, I made sure I got my certification in facilitating uh, a method of writing that I used in the classroom. And so I brought that with me. I met people like yourself and, uh, you know, you organized a group of business people together called the Beach Business Network that had weekly meetings. And so as a brand new business, I was able to go to the weekly meetings and promote what I was doing here. They were a very supportive group of people, including yourself and your husband, who came to my beginning work workshops. And then really it was word of mouth, uh, you know, after the support and, and them having, and having the experience of actually uh, writing and sharing their writing, and in, in many cases going on to publish their writing. Uh, through word of mouth, it, it built. And so I kind of brought some of the things I learned in Canada from the monthly meetings I was attending. We set up, myself and another woman, Lisa Bay, an editor, set up a monthly uh, group where writers could gather. And we just talked about writing or editing or publishing or researching any aspect of writing at a breakfast meeting at a local restaurant here known as Picasso's. And uh, we were fortunate there. This is a community of artists and writers. So we had people who had experience in all those things to draw from and present. 
And then I offered my writing workshops, which are actually hands-on writing workshops. So people come, they write, they share their writing, they send their writing to me for feedback, and then we meet to discuss, you know, what direction that their writing can go in. And then from that also sprung a critique group because you know, it's very hard to catch your own errors. I'm sure uh, when you've done your writing, you read it over and then uh, you really need another set of eyes on it uh, because we're close to the work and we've got so much going on in our, our brains and uh, it's all very clear to us. Uh, but it's important to share that with other writers. So group of us meet and we, you know, we share where it's unclear, where, um, where the writing uh, can be enhanced and improved and uh, you know, just make us better writers. That's cool. Some of us have difficulty with those critiques, not criticisms, right? But a lot of times when you're writing, you're bearing your soul, your deepest emotions, feelings, thoughts, all of that stuff. So to actually put it down and then have somebody else look at it and say, oh, yeah. That's like, so you, you. Yeah, the writing workshops themselves are designed uh, to just address what is working in the piece. You know, it's raw writing. Uh, you haven't had, even had a chance to edit yourself. So uh, everyone in the group reads, everyone provides feedback on each other's writing, and, and you know, you identify, you know, is there an interesting character? Was there an interesting scene? Did you feel a certain emotion uh, when you were uh, listening to the piece? And in doing so, you know, you continually hear what good writing is. And then as you go to the workshop on a regular basis, you build that into your writing. It's rare at the actual workshops where you would have criticism. Then you can take your writing and work on it and improve it. And, uh, you know, uh, the criticism is, is phrased in such a way that uh, it still identifies what works. But, you know, you might ask a question or you might just say, I wasn't quite sure what was going on here. You know, there's no uh, desire to direct the piece. We really believe in honoring a person's own unique voice. We believe everyone has one, regardless of you know their education, their 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 walk in life, and that everyone has a story. So it's about you know helping you to to share that, and and we grow and deepen in community. Uh, you know, many people speak to the fact that they can't recall having been listened to so well, and and actually. You know, um, you know, honored in uh, that people heard what they were saying and were able to say that back to them, and so it very quickly um, you know, developed strong relationships as well. That's really, really fascinating. So, if somebody wants to come to one of your workshops or to um, a retreat or whatever the word tour, how do they get in touch with you? How do they reach out and, and uh, sign up? Uh, you can find me on Facebook on the War Tour uh, or on Tranquilo Retreat. Uh, we also have a website, www.tranquiloretreat.com. Uh, we uh, have uh, uh, you know, a separate casita, we call them here, a small house. And we design the writing workshop, uh, writing experience around you. So we've had guests who are writers who hadn't intended to write necessarily. They just wanted to come and be able to have some dialogue about writing. And, you know, after hiking to the waterfalls, next thing I know, they're sending me their poetry about the waterfall. Oh. You know, I think of, uh, you know, John from Ireland went hiking with us. And even when we're at the waterfall, the words are already, already coming. He's articulating, you know, the sound of the waterfall. And by the time he gets home, he's got it on paper. You know, Norm from the Northwest Territories, he blocked out, you know, two weeks up to come and write. And of course, he did that in the wintertime. So it was warmer. <laughs> really smart. And, and he, he jumped into everything. He went to the writing workshops, he went to the critiquing, he went to the monthly breakfast, and he wrote and shared his work. Uh, so, you know, we really designed it around the writer. We've had writers, uh, had a writer, um, Rachel from United Emeritus. She, when she came, she shut herself in, in the casita and she just like said, 
I cannot get any undistracted time to write. write. And so she would write and then just come out uh, with us for dinner and things. So, you know, it depends on the actual person. Um, and I also am looking to uh, start the word tour where we are doing tours around Panama. That was my goal right before the shutdowns. Uh, so, you know, I'm organizing some things like where you can come for part of the time and go to a beach house and write for a while. And then, then we'll move to, you know, a mountain location and write in the mountains. So, you know, the more that I discover the beautiful spaces here, the more I, I just find like great spaces for writing. And, and when you create the space and, and you write together, it just brings a community writing energy that moves the work forward. So, Wow, that's really exciting. So as a global traveler and as a realtor, um, I love the opportunity to chat with people like you because my goal is to help those who are thinking about, you know, I don't necessarily want to retire in the same area. I want to be able to pick up and move and maybe move somewhere around the world. And people reinvent themselves all the time, right? And a lot of times things just, to your point, if you just um, prepare that space, something will flow in of what you're supposed to do, what you're meant to do, what your passion maybe is. And, you know, for for you, it's phenomenal because you, you really have embraced Panama and all the things about Panama. And now you're opening the doors to share that with everybody else, which is really cool. Um, and, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, and as you know, the world get is, has become very small. So uh, in participating in a writing conference that's offered out of Calgary called When Words Collide, um, an editor picked up one of my query letters to offer me some feedback on. And uh, our call, our Zoom meeting, he was in Greece and I was in Panama. The conference was in Calgary. And, you know, we discover that he went to the high schools that I taught at in Ontario and he lived in um, the area that I volunteered with youth in, uh, like a block away from where I volunteered for a decade. And you know, it, you know, he's a man who's published 40 books and his books are about to become a TV series. So now I'm getting an opportunity to interview him and share that, you know, with those schools and those youth. You know about someone from their area the success that he's had globally you know being able to uh, to work um, from a great distance and, and still share yeah it, it's exciting you know it's unfortunate that we've all had to, to kind of pivot and change our plans this year but in a way it's kind of opened up a lot of other opportunities that none of us were able to to see before you know that you and i can sit here and have this interview not next to each other but still still chat and I get to see your beautiful vista, right? You're in your, your bohio. And I would guess as a writer coming to your place, it's probably pretty hard to just want to stay locked up when you can go sit by the pool and enjoy the hammock and uh, fresh fruit, all of those kind of things. Most so. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and cook outside. We have a great outdoor cooking space. You know, it, outdoor living is exactly what we do, and outdoor writing definitely is part of it. And it was a, actually a little bit of a challenge for my writing group. They didn't really want to meet on Zoom because they're like, we want to be in your bahio. It's just so <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. There's a there's a great energy in Panama, and um, you know, I was there for like seven years, and and only I'm going to be back. I'm only out temporarily at the moment. But um, you just find that once folks get there, you can see after a certain amount of time, they, they look healthier, they feel healthier, that it's the fresh air, the food, the, the camaraderie. Um, you know, a lot of times people say, you know, if I retire, unlike your husband who didn't want to do anything, but they, <laughs> or mine, um, they, they say, I don't know what I would do. What am I going to do if I come to town? What is there to do? So if I'm not a writer, um, what other kind of things do some of the folks do that are in Panama that have retired there? Uh, well, uh, you know, it really depends on their interests. There's a, a golf course nearby here. A lot of people walk the beach. They go hiking. 
you know, not too far up the highway. There's a surfing school, certainly Paivanau is a surfing uh, community. They paddleboard, you know, you can uh, skydive, you can take a catamaran to the islands. Uh, you know, I belong to a walking group. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of uh, communities around interest. So, you know, if you're into like uh, cards or book club or, you know, just about any aspect of life, if there's not a group here, there are people here who probably have that interest. And like myself, right? You can come and you can, you can just bring the people together. And they are people who have lived often in different countries or have, are widely traveled. And so, you know, they they have lots of interesting things to share. So there's lots to do. And someone like yourself, you know, a relocation expert, you're an expert here in Panama. So if anyone's <laughs> thinking about coming here, you've lived it, you know it. And, uh, you know, you can make uh, that transition a little bit easier than the one we had. Our, ours got a little bit bumpy because one of the things that's talked a lot about here is you know do you need to speak Spanish and you know a lot of people will say uh, no you don't need to and, and in our community you can probably on most days get away you know if you're going to a store or restaurant with not although why would you you came here you want to embrace the culture uh, but uh, when I first came I realized uh, the Spanish that I was learning, I should have learned a lot more because the business aspect of it, um, I was dealing with Spanish speakers. And, you know, my husband and I, we had purchased homes. We purchased several homes in different provinces. And, uh, but I came here ahead of him, eight months ahead of him. So I came by myself. And so I was purchasing a home in another country, in another language, and you know, someone such as yourself, you know, guiding through that process and, and making recommendations and referral. That would have just eased the stress a little bit. But, uh, you know, now that we're settled in, um, we're, we're just enjoying the benefits of it. Yeah. That's good. Thank you for, for bringing that up. That was going to be one of my questions, too. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, when you move to a foreign country, do you have to know the language? And, you know, I've traveled all over. I did uh, 39,000 miles in three months. And, yeah, I went to Thailand and Cambodia, all the different places. Like, that would be really hard language to learn before you're going to be there. But with there's, there's um, such an openness and expat community communities everywhere around the world that it's not necessarily mandatory but to your point very recommended that you have some knowledge of the language so you don't end up in a situation that you're you shouldn't be yeah, in. I, no we've had a few opera uh, a few occasions where we've had some miscommunication or whatever and um you know, it's just kind of funny and, and I just, you know, I look back on it like that's my fault. I moved to a Spanish speaking country and I'm not able to communicate well. And so, you know, we are improving our language, we can use Google Translate, but, you know, just some things, they just get lost in the translation and that, that's just a part of it until you get, you get better at the language. Yeah. To, to definitely get immersed. Yeah, it, you know, it's so easy now traveling and, and moving abroad because of Google, things like Google Translate, right? That you, you can just bring it up, we've got internet, it's all that stuff right here in your hand that you have. So you had mentioned earlier that your children were here. Um, you and I were chatting, your daughter is no longer in Panama, her job transferred her somewhere else, but your son is still here and obviously, um, artists run in your family. Tell me a little bit about what your son does because I'd love to chat with him later so maybe uh, we can do a part two of our, our interview. Yes, so our son Lee, he actually was the first one to come to Panama. He is a freelance photographer. Uh, at the time he moved here, he was also doing graphic design and web design. He's also very good at that. Uh, but he originally invited us down uh, to, you know, to see the country he was living in and to meet the people he was meeting. So my husband and I felt very flattered that our 20-something year old son thought it was nice to have his parents come to another country and see his life there. And, uh, you know, we really, really enjoyed it. Now, he has a couple aspects to his business. So he travels internationally to do events, weddings, um, 
uh, and other events and certainly around Panama to do events. Uh, he would call his photography work lifestyle photography. He's got a website, uh, lee.com, L-E-Y-G-H.com. That's his uh, lifestyle photography. Uh, but he's also launched a new business he calls Lens Venture, and that's lensventure.com, L-E-N-S venture.com. He's now living down in Playa Vanau in a surfer community, but he takes uh, people to various places in Panama, and ultimately he will do it in other countries as well. And they go on adventures and they learn photography, and it's been quite popular. So actually this coming weekend is one in Playa Vanau, and uh, he is just living his dream. He's in a cabin on the beach that's like glamping to me. <laughs> that, that suits with, you know, just who he is. And, you know, I, I owe a lot to him, uh, not just for traveling here to Panama, but other places. He's definitely the one that's, uh, you know, encouraged our family to get out and see other parts of the world. And, and as you know, you, you don't recognize how North American you are until you get outside North America, right? <laughs> and it's great to see other points of view and how sometimes people have, you know, way better ways of doing things than we, you know, we just didn't know other ways. And so, yeah, uh, having Lee was definitely, um, you know, uh, he provided a lot of the direction for getting this here. And Lace was working wow. here at the time as well. Um, and, uh, you know, she has the dream to come back. She's got Panama in her blood too. You know, she's got a beach house in mind and, and a, a business in mind as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if you end up interviewing her. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. Maybe I can get all three of you guys on at the same time. And, and, and you bring up a really good point with that. It's, you know, I did mention that you guys were retired and you reinvented yourself, you moved to Panama. But it's not just for folks that have already had a first career. There's a lot of young people transitioning and, and doing remote work and just really experiencing life and living a lifestyle of adventure, right? So, yeah. you know, that's what I, if my, my ad is, if you want to live in an RV or in a tiny house, or you just want to glamp it somewhere, I'm, I'm your girl. Just give me a holler and I'll be happy to help you. And I'll be able to connect you with people like yourself, right? So they can come to Panama, hang out with you and just say, all right, show me around a little bit, introduce me to some folks and, and we're good to go. So it's really, it's an exciting time, I think, for people. Yes, lots of opportunity and you know, even people with young families, you know, imagine giving your children, you know, the um, learning experiences of different cultures and, and growing up uh, appreciating those things. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. When you talk about the um, Beach Business Networking, we had a couple that were world schooling they had three young girls that they were they had taken the year and I do they were from North America somewhere and they the, the little girls were like nine eight seven something like that and they were literally just traveling all around the world within that year and they were um, they entertained us with the violin all three of them were playing they were doing their lessons via FaceTime but it was so fascinating because that's one of my goals with my grandsons is to able to take them around the world and just show them that you know open their eyes right so that they can say oh my gosh I've been here and that the world is my oyster you know it can do anything and travel anywhere so what a great gift to give them great idea yeah yeah we might have they've already been to Panama two of them so <laughs> <laughs> they've been to school in Panama and everything we're two and three years old but it's <laughs> I have to bring them back but they still remember I did a book with them um, we put the pictures in and we talked a little bit so they have a book that they can sit and look at and remember their experience with it. So that was a lot of fun. So Linda, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I know you got things going on. If not, you're going to sit in that hammock or lay it by the pool and just chill out. So I really appreciate you spending some time with me and sharing some of your experience and a little bit more about the word tour and about Tranquilo Retreat. Uh, definitely, I will... Um, have people reach out to you and contact you. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you in person again soon. So thank you again and um, stay in touch.
Thank you, Cynthia. I appreciate the chance to share. We want to see people with those stories and books in their hands, right? So, <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of that, I did talk to uh, one of the folks that gives you a lot of credit. He uh, wrote a book called To Retire in Panama, and he um, credits you, and we have interviewed him. So if you all are on here, you're going to have to look for that interview on, on our channel and uh, follow up with him as well. Absolutely, I will. Greg's got a great story. He does. Thank you.